Orpheus is a hero from Greek mythology. When his wife Eurydice dies, a grieving Orpheus reaches the netherworld to bring her back. The gods of the underworld give permission to Eurydice to return to the world of the mortals, but on one condition. Until they cross the boundary of the underworld, Orpheus is not to look back and check if Eurydice is following him. This legend may have inspired the title of the book we are going to discuss today. This book titled Orpheus is a collection of short stories and its writer is Dilip Purushottam Chitre. Welcome to the 71st episode of Granth Yatra. Dilip Chitre was born in 1938 at Baroda. His father Purushottam Chitre used to publish a well-known magazine called Abhiruchi. Dilip Chitre completed his college education in Mumbai and worked in the field of advertisement and journalism. Chitre is well known as an acclaimed poet, translator, column writer, artist and script writer. He was an active member of the Little Magazine movement in Marathi. The stories in the collection Orpheus that was published in 1968 are the stories of life in mega cities. Chitre depicts the busy life in cities, the loneliness experienced by the city dwellers despite being surrounded by crowds, their self-centeredness, suffocation, fear and the stifling nature of man-woman relationships through these stories. The very first tale in this collection is titled Orpheus. The writer visits a well-kept cemetery. There, he spots a grave of a young woman named Anna. Her date of birth engraved on her tombstone is the same as the writer's date of birth, but Anna has died at the age of 22. The writer's curiosity is aroused by Anna who had been born on the same day as the writer but had died 22 years later. What could have caused her death? How did she look like when she was alive? While the writer ponders over these questions, his mind is flooded with numerous questions about existence itself. Chitre writes, But I could not manage to visualize Anna Avakian's face. Her whole body was right there, below the mud and stones. Only the cover of the grave separated us. There was no one else around, but I could not visualize Anna's face. Just like mythical Eurydice, Anna too is invisible and mysterious here. One of the stories in the book is Vasaunsi Jirnani, whose title is part of a verse from Bhagavad Gita, which means souls discard bodies just as we discard old clothes. This is the tale of a man who leads an extremely lonely life in a bustling city. This old man named Kulkarni is religious by nature. He has faith in miracles and his behavior is somewhat strange. His superstition leads to the death of a little girl next door. Later, Kulkarni too passes away from the shock of the tragedy. Similarly, the protagonist of the tale Methedrin is a lonely person. In addition, he suffers from a total lack of self-confidence. He consumes a mood-enhancing drug and visits a young woman who had been his friend in the past. He reveals to her his emotions that he had never had the courage to express in the past. But when she does not respond in any manner, his perception about his self-identity gets all messed up. Chitre writes, I roamed around Mumbai all night. These words have turned cliché, but it's true that a wild and fluent swan continues to flap its wings through the darkness. Similarly, hippopotamuses lounge in the beginningless coolness of the muck. The law comes to an end at the equator. In the latter half, the stars set and the days swell up. Man is the blade of a plough, but some land is needed. Walls of cement concrete, steel rails, iron pylons, dazzling inhuman lights, vast tarred roads. I sacrifice myself to all this. All I need is land, just enough to cover the point of a needle where my blood can spill. Another much talked about story in this collection is the jet black hairy pup. The protagonist of this story has lost his identity. He is a common man who has assimilated in the goings-on of the world, but his mental world is not involved in it. 
After witnessing the deaths of his grandparents, he becomes acutely aware of his being alive. When he gets involved with Mrs. Rani, he becomes aware of the isolation, intensity and parody of existence. Chitre writes, I was with my grandfather in the hospital for over a fortnight before he died. Vithal Mahadev Zamkhedkar, not his grandson, but an observer. We are all descendants of the amoeba. The only difference is that our single-celled ancestor had the legacy of splitting and duplicating itself. Vithal Mahadev Zamkhedkar is the inorganic equivalent of myself. The story Tidik Tiridi Ani Anantkar or Rage, Hers and Infinite Time is a farce. Chitre has himself noted that in his article. The protagonist of this tale has no courage to face the world. That is why he lives under the assumption that he is pure and the rest of the world is dirty. Look at this paragraph. Sadashiv was aware of the fact that sunlight is scary. The heaps that unravel at night, the beating drums turn fearfully clear and stationary in the morning. Night is the time when everything disintegrates and comes alive. In the morning, everything turns inevitable, ugly, immobile and whole. He could see anything he wanted in his dreams. The little fingers with polished nails arranged serially in the filing cabinet of his office. Jet black letters of all sizes. The fat leaders in stark white clothes at election rallies wearing garlands of intestines. Clusters of emotions, yes, even abstract things. The story typewriter picturizes a man trying to live passionately in the seven-storied asylum on the outskirts of the city. Critic Indumati Shevde says that this story is a parody of a society turned mechanical that tries to turn all individuals into identical and uniform beings by suppressing their natural aspirations and desires. The protagonist of the story, The Apprentice in the Dark, is a social worker, but is incapable of achieving anything on his own. He always prefers to be one among the crowd. Chitre writes, On the other hand, he felt better when he was amidst a crowd. Niranjan loved meetings. Mass contact was the best thing. He felt somewhat empowered when he was among others. A mild loss of identity. In the tale, Welcoming the Lover, Chitre expresses some fundamental thoughts about interpersonal passions. He picturizes a man trying to live passionately by abandoning social norms. The protagonist feels that passion is the only yardstick for existence. He is surprised that people often live absent-mindedly and as if they are half asleep. The story unfolds through thoughtful ruminations and contemplative experience. The writer paints a love experience that is beyond virtue and sin or the difference between the physical and the platonic. Death of the Talented is another important story that portrays an intense experience of life. The narrator of this story has witnessed the deaths of three talented persons. Three ways of the three deaths. One of them was a true artist. The second was a con man a coward and weak man who even dupes himself. And the third was an intelligent person who could not rise up the social order. The deaths of these three talented men are experienced at different levels. Yet, all three remain self-centered. They keep sucking the thumb of their gift of imagination. They cannot find a new topic for their creations. They weave their gigantic egos into their writings but cannot bring empathy into it. The stories in this collection thus encourage the readers to contemplate on human existence. They make us uncomfortable because their topics are related to some dark areas in human behavior. It is believed that Chitre's writings are surrealistic. Surrealism is that form of writing that allows a free flow of primordial urges and internal emotions that are usually suppressed by etiquettes. The primordial urges and feelings such as passion for life, the sex drive, the fear of death, the fear of loss of identity get expressed in Chitre's short stories. That is why these stories do not entertain, 
but compel the reader to search for the meaning of life by making him confront the thoughts and feelings at the bottom of his mind. They try to awaken the self-realization in the reader. We have with us today Dr. Narendra Gharat, who will talk to us about Orpheus, a collection of short stories that is very unique in its content and form. Orpheus, या कथा संग्रह मधील सर्वच्या सर्व कथा ह्या एका वेगळ्याच विचार जाणिवा प्रकट करणाऱ्या आपल्याला दिसून येतात आधुनिक प्रयोगशीलतेचा प्रत्यय त्याबरोबरच आपल्याला पारंपरिक कथा कल्पनांना तडा तडा आणि प्रचलित ज्या काही पारंपरिक कथा लेखनाचे तंत्र आहेत या कथा लेखना या कथा तंत्रांना त्यांनी तडा दिलेला आपल्याला दिसतो आणि त्यांची ही जी कथा आहे ही कथा आपल्याला जाणून घ्यायची जर असेल तर पारंपरिक कथा तंत्राचे आपल्या मनावर असलेले जो खड दूर करणे महत्वाचे ठरते ऑर्फेस मधील बारा कथांमधून दिलीप चित्रे यांनी माणसाच्या अस्तित्वाची शोकांतिका मांडलेली आहे आणि ही शोकांतिका मांडताना त्यांनी अस्तित्ववादी व अतिवास्तववादी या विचार प्रणालींचा आधार घेतलेला दिसून येतो अफाट अशा पसरलेल्या महानगरातून एकाठीपणे जीवन जगणाऱ्या माणसांचे चित्रण त्यांच्या कथांमधून पाहावयास मिळते उदाहरणार्थ आपल्याला कथांच्या कथांचा उल्लेख करावा लागेल केसाळ काळोर पिल्लू तिरडी तिडीक आणि अनंत काळ आर्फियस अंधारातला अप्रेंटिस आणि टाईप रायटर या कथांमधून अस्तित्ववादी जाणिवांचा उत्कट आविष्कार आपल्याला होताना दिसतो पण ऑर्फियन्स मधील सर्वच्या सर्व बारा कथा त्या चित्रे यांच्या विविध प्रतिक्रियाक्षम मनोवृत्तीच्या द्योतक आहेत विविध आशय सूत्रांनी परिपूर्ण असणारी चित्रे यांची कथा मराठी कथेच्या विकासातील एक महत्वाचा टप्पा ठरतो अस्तित्ववादी विचार जाणिवा प्रकट करणे हे दिलीप चित्रे यांच्या कथांचं एक महत्वपूर्ण वैशिष्ट्य आहे असं आपल्याला म्हणता येईल युरोपीय साहित्याचा प्रभाव त्यांच्या लेखनावर आहे आधुनिक काळात मानवी अस्तित्वाला खूप महत्वाचं स्थान आहे आणि असण्याची जाणीव ही मुळात अस्तित्वाच्या मुळाशी असते आणि त्यांच्या बहुतेक कथांचा विचार केला तर अस्तित्ववादी जाणिवा प्रकट करणाऱ्या कथा आपल्याला दिसून येतात आणि या कथा नव्या जाणिवेच्या नव्या विचारसरणीच्या आहेत त्या नीटपणे समजून घेणे आपल्याला महत्वाचे ठरते पारंपरिक कथा साच्याला छेद देऊन चित्रे यांची कथा मराठी कथेमध्ये एक नाविन्यपूर्ण ठरताना आपल्याला दिसत आहे आर्फियस असो मेथी ड्रीम केसाळ काळोबोर पिल्लू व्हायरस तिडी तिरडी आणि अनंत काळ आणि स्कार्पिओ या कथांचा आपल्याला आवर्जून उल्लेख करावा असा वाटतो एकोणवीसशे साठ नंतर महत्वाची महानगरीय कथा ही दिलीप चित्रे यांनी लिहिलेली आपल्याला दिसून येते एवढ्यावरच दिलीप चित्रे दिलीप चित्रे यांची कथा थांबत नाही तर यांच्या कथात्म साहित्याचे स्वरूप समकालीन इतर कथा लेखनांवरून लेखकांपेक्षा आपल्याला भिन्न वाटते आणि हे भिन्न वाटण्याचं कारण काय तर त्यांच्या कथांमधून स्त्री पुरुष मिलनातून अस्तित्वाची जाणीव प्रकट करणाऱ्या कथा आपल्याला फार मोठ्या प्रमाणामध्ये दिसून येतात अस्तित्वाचा शोध घेणे हे चित्रे यांच्या कथात्म साहित्याचं प्रमुख वैशिष्ट्य असलं तरी अस्तित्वाचा शोध हा दैहिक पातळीवरून ते घेण्याचा प्रयत्न करतात चित्रे यांच्या बहुतांश कथांमधून स्त्री पुरुष शरीर संबंधाचे चित्र नेते चित्रे यांच्या कथा कथेमध्ये स्त्री पुरुष संबंधाला अतिशय महत्वाचे स्थान आहे त्यांच्या कथांमधील बहुतांशी व्यक्तिरेखा ह्या लैंगिक कृतीतून अस्तित्वाचा शोध घेताना दिसतात आणि या कथांचा जर आपल्याला विचार करायचा जर असेल तर यामध्ये आपल्याला जराचं स्वगत दहा हजार शब्द अंधारातला अप्रेंटिस आणि स्कार्पिओ या कथांचा आपल्याला विचार करावा लागतो एकूणच स्त्री पुरुष संबंधाकडे चित्रे वेगळ्या दृष्टीने पाहतात ही दृष्टी त्यांना जी प्राप्त झालेली आहे ही अध्यात्मातून त्यांना प्राप्त झालेले आहे असं म्हणता येईल दिलीप चित्र हे प्रयोगशील कथा लेखक आहेत पारंपरिक आदर्शवादी 
जीवनवादी कथांपेक्षा चित्रे यांच्या कथा पूर्णत वेगळ्या आपल्याला दिसून येतात अस्तित्ववादी जाणीवा प्रकट करण्यासाठी चित्रे यांच्या कथांच्या माध्यमातून विविध प्रकारच्या प्रयोगशीलतेचा मार्ग ते अवलंबताना दिसतात ही प्रयोगशीलता कथा वस्तूंच्या आशय विषयांपासून थेट निवेदना निवेदन पद्धतीपर्यंत दिसून येते जीवनाचा उत्कट शोध घेण्याचा प्रयत्न त्यांच्या अनेक कथांमधून आपल्याला दिसून येतो चित्रे यांच्या कथात्म साहित्यात प्रेम या संकल्पनेला फार महत्वाचं स्थान आहे जीवनाचा प्रत्येक क्षण उत्कटपणे जगताना तसेच स्वतःची वैशिष्ट्य कायम ठेवून जगताना आजच्या भारतीय सांस्कृतिक सामाजिक संदर्भात अनेक प्रकारच्या नीती नियमांना सामाजिक संकेतांना चित्रे झुंगारून देतात जाराचं स्वगत ही कथा त्या दृष्टीने विश्लेषणीय आहे या कथेमध्ये चित्रे माणसा माणसातील उत्कटतेविषयी मूलगामी स्वरूपाचे विचार मांडतात सामाजिक संकेतांना झुंगारून उत्कटपणे जगण्याची धडपड करणाऱ्या या नायकाचे चित्र या कथेमध्ये आपल्याला आलेलं दिसून येतं त्याचप्रमाणे प्रतिभावंताचं मरण ही सुद्धा कथा जीवनाचा उत्कट शोध घेणारी कथा आपल्याला दिसून येते अशा प्रकारे त्यांच्या कथांचा विचार केला तर आपल्याला निर्णय पद्धतीच्या कथा आपल्याला त्यांच्या दिसून येईल आणि या कथांमधन केवळ केवळ त्यांनी माणसाच्या अस्तित्वाचा शोध वेगळ्या पद्धतीने नाविन्यपूर्ण रीतीने घेण्याचा त्यांनी प्रयत्न केलेला आहे धन्यवाद डू रेड द शॉर्ट स्टोरी कलेक्शन ऑर फिअर्स बाय दिलीप चित्रे दॅट डेपेक्ट द स्टेट्स ऑफ माइंड व्हेरी डिफरंट दॅन दोज फाउंड इन टिपिकल स्टोरीज अँड विच पोर्ट्रेज द लोनलीनेस इन सिटी लाईफ Tell us what you felt after reading this book in the comments section of this video. We shall meet in the next episode of Granth Yatra to explore another collection of short stories that has the victim of social inequality at its center. Until then, keep reading.